Welcome back to the second part. Here we start with identifying your enemy tank's weaknesses. Now for this purpose, you go to your campaign that you're currently playing and you look at the campaign progression and you can look, click on any tanks. Now this gives you a first little bit superficial overview regarding the tanks. Superficial because it only gives you some basic data, but this is already enough at the beginning because we can see how many crew members a tank has. We can see the weapons, we can see the speed, we can see the armament around the tank. And this leads to the following deductions that you can make. First of all, you want to find weak spots and you want to identify where you can shoot profitably and where you absolutely don't want to shoot. If you see here, the hull armor at the front has 100 millimeters. It means this is the strongest part. You absolutely want to avoid shooting into this part. Now you fi let's find the weak spots. Well, the weak spots most of the time are the sides of a tank and very often some specific weak parts at the front. This whole frontal part is quite perfectly armored, especially the hull part, but even the turret part is strong. But this machine gun port is weak. Reason for that is this machine gun port in the center can't be, it absolutely cannot be 100 millimeters. It will always be weaker. Same is true for the jumbo of the Americans and the Tiger 1 and 2 of the Germans. So you absolutely want to hit these weak spots. Another thing to avoid is hitting sloped areas because sloped areas give much more effective armament than they actually have. And you see this is sloped. If you shoot from the side straight, it's also a bit sloped. The whole turret is sloped. So yeah, you want to avoid hitting the turret perfectly parallel to the ground because then it will profit from slopeness. So yeah, if you see a tank is completely sloped like this one, well, usually you can shoot at the wheel area because most tanks have their ammo storage underneath the whole part where the crew sits. So if you shoot through these wheels, which is very easy to accomplish, you will perfectly hit the ammunition racks. And here comes the best thing. If you already unlock the tank, you can actually put it into your squads and then you get access to armor and x-ray vision. Now this is the good thing because here we can perfectly see the more the darker orange or red it is, the better it armor the better armored it is. And this calculation already includes the slopeness. And you see the green parts which are the easiest to destroy. And you can see here the right sides, as I said, wheels very easy to blow up or very easy to penetrate. And also shooting with cannons of your planes from the upside from the Upper part from the sky also effective or throwing a TNT pack on this back side also very effective. And looking inside the tank gives us the information first of all where the crew members are. Absolutely helpful because if someone, well, if someone is up with an anti-tank rifle, well now you know if you're using the rifle yourself where to shoot and you also want to make sure that if you see as a tank driver yourself you are quite quickly, like quite quickly getting hit by something. It doesn't blow you up. It doesn't make your tank red, but your tankers are dying slowly, <laughs> one after the other. That very likely means uh, someone with an anti tank rifle who learned exactly this positioning of your crewmates just snipes them one by one. And yeah, now here you see if you shoot at enemy tanks, you want to hit these ammo racks or these fuel areas. And this is exactly why you want to shoot from, oftentimes shoot 90 degrees from the right into the wheels, because shooting into the wheels means exactly you're gonna hit the ammo boxes because you penetrate the wheels. Hitting this sloped area obviously won't work that well, because even though we have the fuel tanks here, they are protected by this very 15, milli 15 centimeter sloped armament, but exactly the wheels, as I already said, are the weak spot of almost every tank, so this way you want to shoot. And the last thing regarding tanks themselves is what about the crew? Well, the crew members, as all the assault members and enlisted, as all soldiers enlisted, you want to level up, and giving them the fifth level gives you something really important, because if you look at the perks available to tankers, most of them are not good. Reason for that is the following. You can't get Vitality because you get a minus two penalty on Vitality or on red perks. And you, but you can get the green and yellow perks to the maximum. 
since you're not really fighting as an infantryist, most of these abilities wouldn't even help you. For that reason, tankers get some specific perks. And here's the thing. There's actually literally only one optimal way to build your tankers, and it's the following way. Give every of your tankers the fast loading perk and the fast ammunition, uh, the fast, well, basically the fast gunning perk and the fast ammunition related perk. The descriptions here are in bad, imprecise English and are more, more confusing than helpful. Now, what do they do? Very simple. The fast ammo changing perk, the green one, means that you can switch from one ammunition type to the other, meaning from high explosives to anti-tank and you don't lose your progress. Because if you don't have this perk, let's say you're reloading ammunition and you reload it 99% and then you think, oh, I want to get, uh, I think I'd rather get the other ammunition type. If you switch to the other ammunition type, you lose all the progress and you can start reloading once again. Or if you already loaded ammunition type, you can't just switch from one type to the other instantly. But with this perk, with this green perk, you can do it. And the fast gunning perk, a uh, fast reload perk also lets you, well, reload faster. Uh, well, precisely put, the, f the yellow perk lets you gun faster. This is once again Gaijin English, meaning badly translated. The, f the yellow perk lets you, lets, lets you move your cannon faster, move your turret faster while you're aiming, and also lets you move it more precisely. So. You want these two perks because they are absolutely essential for being extremely fast with your cannons. Everything else literally doesn't matter because you can't really get any good perks. Now, if you're still low level and you haven't access to, to all of the maximum perk numbers, well, there are some still good ones that you can take for in between. And it's the 10 costed yellow one because it makes your repairs a little bit better. Uh, what you also can do is you can take the faster board switching so once your crew members die you can switch faster from one spot to the other though it's not that helpful you can also get faster repair speed this is actually a good one though it's much worse than the 16 costed one and you can get the sp fast speed gear shift and also sp faster use of brake now these are good for the driver and many people do the following it's which is also what i have done for a long time I gave my drivers the obviously better driver perks and the gunner and loader the other perks. But here's the problem. If you're in a real battle, your gunners, your crew members are gonna die. And then, well, guess what? <laughs> if your crew members are dying, you're under strong pressure. Meaning you need to react and shoot back very quickly. But if your gunner and loader died, you lose access to this speed in terms of shooting back. And the only way to still have it is if all of your soldiers have these two perks. So the, re so the conclusion is if you want to have a very strong tank crew and also a comfortable to use one, meaning that doesn't lose all of the proficiencies after losing one single crew member, then just give every crew member these two perks. And for the other perks, I just give them whatever. The fast switching perk is cool. All the other perks could be also nice. For the red ones, I give this passive regeneration. And for the yellow ones, I just give something that helps them as infantry because, well, if your tank blows up or it's too damaged, you just leave your tank and you want to fight with them. And for that reason, give them some nice, nice weapons. A perfect tanker would look something like this. Give him the strongest SMG that you can get. Then give him a grenade, either explosion pack so he can blow up tanks or something more effective against infantry which is, it just depends on what you like more. You can give him a pistol, you can give him an uh, you can give him a, an axe so he can run faster. Not really that much important, you can also give him mines if you want, but what's really important is that he gets a large backpack. Because the large back, backpack gives him access to four slots, or even a small backpack is already enough to give him more slots. He can have either a mix of tools and med packs, the, the way you want. Now, I recommend two tools and two med packs because if he repairs, if you leave the tank again, he can repair again. So this is already very comfortable because sometimes you get shot a couple of times and you repair your tank and then you leave your tank again after getting shot. You want to repair and you can't because, well, your soldier doesn't have tools. 
well, the other soldier may have tools, but you don't know that. <laughs> so you may lose some precious time switching around soldiers until you find a soldier which still has tools and in the meantime you get shot. So you want to avoid this, so have two tools on every soldier and then give him two med packs because, well, you will never need three tools. Basically, this will never happen in a real game. <laughs> but you will need at least one med pack because while you're driving in your tank you can still click on T to heal your tankers that are damaged. And if you use them as infantry, you still have a med pack that you can use to heal them. Or even better, if you're still grinding and you need the experience, once you leave your crew, once you leave your tank and you start infantrying with your crew, you can just heal other soldiers, other teammates with your two med packs. So you basically become a med squad and you get lots of experience for that. Healing a, healing a team member who's downed gives you twice as much experience as killing someone somewhere on the map. When it comes to using tanks, what's important is not only knowing how to use your tank, but also knowing what the enemies are going to do against you. So here's one of the most dangerous situations that come up. First thing is, if you are hiding somewhere, make sure you either have distance, a healthy distance towards enemies, or that you can see what the enemies around you are doing if they're close enough. For example, if you see one soldier coming towards you, count the, count the grenades that he's throwing. Most soldiers will only throw one grenade. So if you survive the first TNT and you don't see any TNT flying towards you anymore, this is a good sign. Now, smart players though will do the following. Here we have the situation. I'm approaching this enemy tank and I'm literally climbing from the hillside so he can't see me. Since most tankers have a very, very tunnel vision, I'm very, I'm 100% sure he won't be able to see me. And I can safely throw the TNT behind the wall. So if you don't see any enemies in front of you, even far away, make sure to still expect enemies coming from, from the sides, behind houses and behind walls. Now, how can you expect them without seeing them? Very simple. If you see that the front line changed and the enemy started getting closer, or if you haven't seen any enemies in a while coming from a certain direction, then you can expect enemies to come like here from the side. For example, here, we, we just captured the objective that's behind me and this tanker hasn't seen me, but he needs to expect me to come around because Guess what? Somewhere the, the people who just captured the objective have to be. And if they're not in front of him, where the objective lies, they must be somewhere next to him to the sides. Another threat to tanks is the class of weapons that contains bazookas, panzerfaust and similar things. Now this enemy tank is hiding behind a wall on a bridge far away deep in the grey zone. He thinks he has double protection. A. He has reach or he has distance. So enemies won't be able to, to throw grenades on him and enemy, enemies won't be able to shoot at him with their bazookas and panzerfausts and especially not hit him actually because this dude, since he's behind the wall, can't be hit straight in a straight line. <laughs> and this is where, where tankers start feeling completely safe. He even has this little tower part in front of him. And here's the thing, you can still hit enemies like that. If you use your... If you use 1000% of your brain, just shoot in a parabolic way, shoot your projectile in a curve and you can sh literally shoot behind walls. So never expect to be completely safe as a tanker, even if you're sitting behind a wall, camping in a grey zone, good players will still be able to reach you if they have the proper equipment. Another mistake that many tankers do is what happened here. I'm playing Japanese and I'm running around with my cannon, the Emperor's cannon, and here's a, here's a half-track and I just shoot him with the cannon and he can't do anything about it. Also, not his fault because he very likely couldn't expect me. But here's the thing, what about this dude? This dude literally drove up to the same position as the previous tank, <laughs> even though he saw his teammate exploding in front of him. This is completely bad gameplay. Completely bad gameplay. The first dude gets destroyed, can't do anything about it. But after seeing this explosion, after seeing his team teammate being not able to move anymore because he got hit, and let's say he was focusing on some other side, he still hears the explosion. And he still sees, for the very blind people, a giant fireball in front of him. 
So it's literally impossible to not notice it. But he still keeps driving forward. So this is a brain that move that people need to avoid. Obviously, I took this, I pointed, or I picked this situation because it's as obvious as it, as it gets and as easy to understand as it gets. They are very nuanced situations, but they all follow the same trajectory. If you see indicators of threats of danger, especially completely hard indicators like tanks exploding, make sure you stay out of the danger zone. Now, before you get completely scared and never take a tank again, don't worry, here's the thing. What just happened is actually, well, easy to avoid. And instead you can do things like this here. This dude tried to Molotov me, but guess what? I was ready, I was looking at the right direction, checking the right angles. And though he tried to Molotov me, whenever someone is running with a Molotov towards you, it's the funniest thing ever to shoot him because the Molotov is gonna drop out of his hand and instantly ignite him, even if he just gets injured and downed and he instantly dies. And the funniest thing is, if he's, if he's coming with a whole squad, or even with other teammates next to him, they're all gonna be ignited by his own Molotov. Now, what do you do against enemy planes? Because enemy planes give you triple threats. First of all, they can shoot you down with cannons. Secondly, they can bomb you with bombs. And possibly the most dangerous form, they can shoot you with rockets. Now, if they start shooting at you with cannons, you get strong indicators, you hear it, you even see it, and you can change your position. If they rocket you, the rockets explode instantly, and if he aims well, you literally can't do anything, you're gonna die, which is also realistic. But here's the thing, if they bomb you, you have around two seconds time to drive away. And this is the best thing. Tanks, especially heavy tanks, especially German tanks, are very slow and can't move properly. Here, I saw an enemy plane approaching, I heard it, especially bad pilots who start shooting you even if it most likely won't do anything, even if they still want to bomb you, they start shooting you, giving you the precious information around 3, 4, 5 seconds before you get bombed, that you are gonna get bombed, yeah? So if you're a pilot, don't do useless shooting on enemy tanks, you just give away what's gonna happen to them soon. This dude gave away what's gonna happen, and I instantly started getting ready. Once I noticed it, I started moving and here's the preparation that you need to do if you think you're exposed if you expect oh I'm gonna be attacked by planes in this match get yourself on a slightly elevated position where you can quickly drive downwards meaning where you get accelerated by gravitation because here I'm getting bombed nowhere in hell I would have time to drive away with the slow ass tiger but since I was on this little hill and I was already tilting downwards I literally just needed to drive a little bit to the front and I instantly drop down and I'm surviving the bombs. Now let's look at some ways how to get really really perfect with your tanks. Here's a great situation that shows the importance of teamwork and information flow. This is literally whenever new people come to the server, the first thing we need to make them well get used to is that this is a team game. And if you want to play with other people in the group, you have to be a team player. What happened here is only possible with extremely good coordination. You can see here, I just died and my team gave me the information where a tank is. Now, they told me specifically left of the center in the enemy gray zone at the first house, so I know exactly where to look. And I spawned, you see here, 3, 2, 1, I spawned in my tank and I instantly know where to look. And this dude even shoots, so I, <laughs> it's even easier to find him. And he's instantly dead. And they even told me how he's positioned. So I knew, alright, I don't even have to drive around. I don't even have to go to the left, so I flank him, so I can shoot him to his weak spot. He's already sided towards me, so I can just easily one-shot slap him. Now, even if you don't have perfect timing, perfect team information flow, what still helps is marking. Now everyone knows how helpful marking is, but here's the best thing. Here I'm coming up with a tank towards a new objective, someone marked a tank, and the enemy tank can one-shot my tank. So it's absolutely crucial that he was marked so I get the first shot on him. This is already good, but here comes the best thing. Here's another tank marked and... Oh, what happened? How did we kill him? Well, we didn't cheat, we didn't use wall hacks or whatever, what we did is the following. 
very strong cannons can actually penetrate walls. You have to make sure though you shoot only through one wall and not through multiple walls. Here we literally shoot through one wall and the tank is dead. And yes, this is historically accurate and yes, this is real life physics because read reports from World War II, tank crews, especially in Normandy, very often, or in France, were hiding behind walls, waiting for tanks to come up that they got informed about, and then they shot through the wall. Sometimes even they could shoot through a complete house, through multiple walls, because they knew the piercing shell won't explode when it hits the wall. But it will explode when it hits the iron, or the steel of the enemy tank. So you can actually shoot through a wall, there's enough kinetic energy in the projectile, and the projectile itself is also hard enough to not get to not be destroyed. And you can just penetrate the wall, penetrate multiple walls sometimes even, if they're thin enough, or multiple layers of thin of thin obstacles, and then hit the tank behind it, and you're gonna blow the tank up. So use this trick, it's really really good. No one's gonna expect it, and uh, there's nothing cooler than just killing enemies this way. Let's take a look and analyze another situation. Now here we're sitting in a Soviet tank, playing against Axis in the Moscow campaign, and we are up against an enemy tank. Now what did he do wrong here? Very simple. He saw how his teammates got mowed down from far away. He had to expect an enemy tank, but instead he just, he just drove up straight towards us. That's not how you do it, <laughs> especially since he could have theoretically shot through the bunker, through the open window, into our weak spot on the front. So that would have been the right play for him. Now what is this other dude doing? Well, this other dude on the left side, after he saw his teammate exploding, clearly indicated the tank is shooting at him, especially if he reads the kill feed that says 76mm cannon, 1%, there must be a tank there. So this is the first thing, he doesn't have situational awareness, he's not looking at what's going on. It's very important for you to constantly read the kill feed to get information what's killing enemies, because you can easily identify enemy tanks but by looking at which cannons are depicted in the kill feed. Now if you don't know the cannons inside out, obviously I also don't know, if you play a campaign very often, just take a look at the whole campaign or nation progression tree and look at the enemy tanks, so you know which cannons the enemies have, so you can instantly identify the tanks. Or, if you're lazy like me, there's an easier trick, just look at the caliber. Now, if the beginner tank has, let's say, a 25 or 45 millimeter caliber, and you see stuffing like 40, 50 millimeter, it must be a beginner or medium tank. But if you see high calibers, you know, oh, it must be a strong late game tank. And reading 76 or reading 80 or 88 instantly shows you, all right, there's a problem, <laughs> there's something very dangerous going on. Now, what did, did this dude do? Well, he's driving around with his Curious Tank Commander looking outside. First of all, Curious Tank Commanders usually get the sniping treatment. And if they survive this, well, they still may get blown up. Now, what did he do here? The problem is, he was driving around and he tried to hide. Now, he was hiding, he stopped, but he still exposed his front wheel. Now, the problem is with the front wheel is, man, this is where the... Well, many tanks are built in a way that if you shoot them at the front part from one side to the other at 90 degrees, the explosion part and fragments of the explosion fly straight into the driver area, straight through the whole crew volume. And the whole crew just dies and the whole tank blows up. So don't think, oh, I just exposed a little bit. No, never expose even a little bit. Even that is enough to get killed. Now let's learn from some mistakes that I did. Now here I was in Moscow in the T-34 and I was confronted by an enemy tank. This dude got stuck in the trench, very funny, and here's the first thing. I was shooting at him, perfectly aiming, but not really noticing or caring about the soldier that jumped in front of him. There was a soldier in front of him, and my shot literally hit the enemy soldier and not the tank. So this dude saved his tank. 
with a little bit of, well, waiting, with a little bit of waiting, so the this, this soldier stops jumping around, I just waiting for half of a second, I could have killed him. If this was a strong enemy tank, he could one-shot me in return. Once again, playing tanks versus tanks is very often basically sniping. The first dude who lands a hit wins. So this is the first mistake. And the second mistake was the following. I, I had the high explosive shells loaded and it would have killed this tank. Instead, after, well, being unlucky, I switched to pierce shell, piercing anti-tank piercing shells. And guess what? No damage, as you could see. What's the problem? Very simple. If you are using piercing shells from a very strong cannon, they can literally fly through the enemy tank, if it's a weak tank, and not get any kills. Like in real life, it would have definitely more effects on a tank and on a crew than in the game, but in the game it's still coded in a way that if you over-penetrate, you literally... it's like doing nothing. So if you're in a very strong tank with a strong cannon, and you're up against weak enemy tanks, just use high explosives instead of anti actual anti-tank shells, and you're gonna have much more success. Very famous example for that is to use high explosive shells in your jumbo against enemy pumas, because the pumas are literally gonna ignore very strong piercing shells, but they won't ignore the high explosive shells. A very important thing to know while shooting at infantry is the following. The high explosives in this game are very much nerfed, meaning if you shoot on a wall next to a group of soldiers or if you shoot to the ground, they won't, there won't be as much effect as in real life. Actually, there will be only a very little effect. Now, there's still a way to make sure you constantly get your giant group kills, and this is the following way. Shoot at enemies or shoot at something that sticks out and is around one or two meters high. Because the reason for that is, if the explosion happens above the surface, and it hits only something like a piece of wood, or preferably a living enemy, a soldier, you are gonna make sure that this explosion will have the maximum blast radius. Now, if you don't see enemies, like in this air situation, <coughs> just make sure, just make sure you know the architecture of the objective, and just aim higher than you usually would, so even if you don't see enemies, you just get a lucky shot, and you still are gonna hit a body that's sticking out, and these enemies are gonna die. A similar thing that you can do is, if you're shooting an enemies far away, and you need, and they're moving too quickly and it's hard to hit any enemy, shoot at his legs, because if you're shooting far away, leg hits usually won't kill an enemy, but they will down him. Now you have a target on the ground that's not moving anymore. And then, after this person is lying on the ground, you send him a nice high explosives into the body, and then you're also going to get the giant blast explosion radius with your high explosives. This will multiply the amount of kills that you get immensely if you, hadn't, if you haven't known this trick yet. And you know what's the best thing? You can use this also against anti-tank guns, anti-air guns, and especially HMGs, because they also act as a multiplication tool. And here you see the first shot killed the one who used the HMG. I specifically, well, aimed at him. I hope not to destroy the HMG itself, but, well, I destroyed it, but even after it says the HMG got destroyed, as long as the structure is still standing there, you can use it for your blast radius multiplier. And you see here, I shoot here, and enemies completely far away start dying, because the blast radius was just so big. And for the end, something really funny and helpful, even if you don't have high explosive shells, as long as you use the trick I just told you, you still can create big blast radiuses. You just still need to make sure you shoot as high up as possible. For example, here, two times I made sure I shoot at the heads of the soldiers, because the higher the shell hits the body, the higher from the ground apart, the bigger the blast radius. So even a normal anti-tank shell can create a huge effect against infantry. So yeah, that's it. If you like the video and if you think you learned something, let me know by commenting something interesting, by liking and subscribing, and make sure you share it with your enlisted playing friends so we all can have some really nice challenging games together. 
Until next time, goodbye. Oh, oh was that? Oh, was that your engineer?